Hello, Awana Clubbers. Welcome to uh, TNT tonight. We're pray, uh, talking about God is Love, uh, section 1.4 in your book. Um, to start off with, I'm going to ask you a couple questions to think about. Why do you love the people you love? Just think about that. The people you're. Uh, I, usually, we love people in our family. We're born into a family. Um, we have parents and grandparents and brothers and sisters, so we have a closer connection, bond with them. So, um, and we also develop relationships with uh, with other people at church and at school and work. So, there's reasons why we develop a love relationship with those people. It's because of of the contact we have with them. And now, how do you, how are some ways you show love to those people? Um, you think about you know, you hang out with, with your friends and it's because you enjoy being with them. Um, you have fun together and you, you may help them when they need help with something. Um, and you listen to them. Maybe they have a problem they want to share with you or, or something like that. Or you share something with them. Showing love to someone sometimes costs us something. It takes some of our time. It may, you know, may take take a little effort to, to share show our love to other people. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about love, showing love to those who are closest, closest to us, um, our family and friends. Those who love us and are kind to us are easy to love. But what about those that we don't like so well, that are hard to love? Um, sometimes people treat us badly or unkind to us. Um, and it's hard to show love to those people. Uh, on our own, we cannot truly love those we consider to be our enemies. But with God's help, we can. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about God is love. God himself is love. He loved us even when we were his enemy. Did you know that if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you're God's enemy? Think about that. Studying his love will help us to love people as God loves us. So before we get into the main part of our lesson, um, let's have a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together and uh, just pray that um, you'll guide my words tonight, Lord. May the Holy Spirit guide us and help us as we um, try to understand the importance of, of your love for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so tonight we're going to start, our first point is God is love. God is love. God created us for a love relationship with him. Remember the last time I, I spoke to you about God as creator, um, Genesis 1.27, that God created man in his own image. And so God created us for a love relationship with him. But there's a problem. You remember the um, Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and what happened? God banned them from the garden and from his presence, and that's what happens with us. Our sin keeps us from that relationship with, with God. Uh, Romans 5.10 says that we are enemies of God until we accept Jesus as his, as his Savior, Romans 5.10. And God also loved us even when we were his enemy. Romans 5.8 says but God showed his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So God is love. Our second point tonight, God sent Jesus to show us his love. Someone that was perfect and sinless had to take the price for, for man's sin and to take the punishment for that so that we could have a relationship with God. So God sent Jesus to be the ultimate sacrifice for our sin. God showed how much he loved us by sending his son Jesus, his one and only son, to die on the cross for our sins. <clears throat> 1 John 4, 9 and 10 says, in, the, in this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his son into the world so that we might live through him. And verse 10, and this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us 
and sent his son to be the propiti propitiation for our sins. Kind of a hard word there, propitiation, but it's a, God sent Jesus as atoning sacrifice for our sins. He sent his only son into the world so that sinful humanity might receive eternal life. And God's love set the standard for love Christians are to have. I know there's an old hymn that says, Thou know we are Christians by our love. And, and God set the standard for that, for how we are to treat, treat other people. So God sent Jesus to show his love for us. And our third point, God's love is amazing. God's love is much stronger and more amazing than our love. He loved us and did what was best for us, even though we did not, we didn't do anything to deserve it. Uh, think about how how that is. You would do something really bad, you know, and you treated somebody really bad, and they, but they forgave you, and you know, God did that for us, even though we didn't deserve it. We deserved to die in our sin. That brings us tonight to our memory verse. Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. But because of his great love for us, God, who was rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. So this verse is saying well, we've been saved by grace. There's nothing that we can do physically on this uh, earth to earn that salvation we have to just ask for God's forgiveness and to accept Jesus as our Savior um, we don't have to we don't have to work and do things we just ask and, and it, it can happen right right there on the spot on um, the verse mentions mercy um, being rich in mercy showing kindness to someone who deserves punishment that's what God does for us. And then the transgressions, that's our sin, things we do that are against God's commandments. And then God shows us grace by giving us something that we, he gives us something good that we don't deserve. Um, I've always, I've heard this, this for a long time that if you spell out the word, word grace, G-R-A-C-E, and it's, God's riches at Christ's expense. So Christ paid the price for us. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to go to jail. We don't have to pay a fine. We just accept Jesus and ask him to be Lord of our life and ask for forgiveness for our sins. So God's love is amazing. Our last point, we can follow God's example of love. When we remember how much God loves us, we can learn to love others. Um, this is a process <laughs> that takes time, but uh, I know in my own experience, um, slowly God changed, he's still changing me today, that, that sometimes there's people that, that I, you know, I don't want to love, but God works on my heart and, and I, I learn to forgive and, and to, to do the best I can to, to love them. Um, we learn to do this, we can learn to do what is best for them, even if it means that we will not get the best for ourselves. So sometimes it costs us something to love other people. Um, it might, you know, cost us time, it might, you know, it, it, it's not, not easy. Um, 1 John 4, 7 and 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever knows, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. And verse 8, anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. Just remember that. Anyone who does not love does not know God. It's very powerful in that verse. So to wrap things up here, um, just remember that... God is love. He created us to have a love relationship with him. 
even though we were his enemy. God showed his love by sending Jesus to take the punishment for our sins. And then we can finally we can learn to love others by following God's example of love. Let us close in prayer tonight. Father, we thank you for this time together and uh, I just pray for, for the hearts of those who have seen this video. Lord, we pray that we will continue to grow in, in faith and to grow in our love for other people. And we just praise you for sending your son Jesus to, to pay the ultimate price for our sins. Lord, we love you and thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Every, amen. Thank you and hope you're all doing well. God bless.